Hello everyone. My name is Professor Tarup Parmar. Here we will continue our discussion where we are discussing data warehouse practical for TYBACIT SEM 6. In previous 5 practicals we are already done configuring listener, configuring database, configuring repository and workspace, logging into design center and also defining a target warehouse uh, module. So we are done with all this five practicals in this particular lecture we will continue with the six that is designing dimensions. So let's start with designing a dimension today's lectures topic. To perform this practical we have to go to first Oracle 11G. Under Oracle 11G we have to click on design center. As you can see, once we click on a design center, it gives us a login window where we have to enter username, password and few other details. As you can see, username, password, host name, service name. So let's start. My username is BACIT underscore user. How I created this user? For that, you can just directly watch my practical number 3 and 4. Then password that is Oracle only. As we are performing practical on a local computer the host name is localhost and service name this is also we have created in our previous practical where we have provided service name that is TYBACIT DW. So as we click on OK it gives us a window. As you can see after login it, give, it will give us this type of a design center where it is divided in three parts project explorer, connection explorer and global explorer. Now in this lecture we are going to talk about creating a dimensions. Now before we continue with our practical we should have some basic understanding about this. The warehouse builder provides us a couple of ways to create a dimension. One way is to use the wizard that it provides which will automatically create a dimension for us. The other way is to manually create it. We have identified three dimensions that we are going to need one is date dimension or also called as time dimension. Second is product dimension. Third is store dimension. The date or time dimension as we have seen is our time or date dimension for providing a time series for our data. That kind of dimension is common to most data warehouse and the information it contains is very similar from warehouse to warehouse. So recognizing this commonality the warehouse builder provides us a special wizard to use just for time dimension. Let's begin with that one. Now, let's talk a bit about creating as well. So, throughout this topic, we will discuss creating object. But what we are really creating is the metadata that describes the objects. Nothing will be actually created in the database yet. We won't actually do that. Basically, we are not going to do that. Um, for now we'll do it in some future lectures now something about time dimension which you should have basic understanding before we uh, perform this particular practical so the time dimension is uh, okay so uh, let's discuss briefly about what time dimension is and then we'll dive right into data warehouse builder design center and create one a time dimension is a key part of most data warehouse. It provides us the time series information to describe our data. A key feature of data warehouse is being able to analyze data from several time periods and compare results between them. The time dimension is what provides us the means to retrieve data by time period. Remember, do not be confused by the use of word time to refer to this dimension. In this case, it does not refer to the time of a day, but to time in general, which can span days, weeks, months and so on. We are using it because the warehouse builder uses the word time for this type of dimension to signify a time period. So when referring to a time dimension here, we will be talking about our time period dimension that we will be using to store the date. We will give the name date to be clear about what information it contains. Now, every dimension whether time or not has four characteristics that have to be defined in Oracle Warehouse Builder. First characteristic is levels. 
Now the levels are for defining the levels where aggregation will occur or to which data can be summed. We must have at least two levels in our time dimension while reporting on our data from our data warehouse. User will want to see total summed up by certain time periods such as per day, per month or per year. If you want to see the sales of some company day wise, week wise or year wise. This becomes the levels. A multidimensional implementation includes metadata to enable aggregation automatically at those levels. If we use OLAP or online analytical process feature, the relational implementation can make use of those levels in queries to sum the data. The warehouse builder has the following levels available for a time dimension when using the time dimension wizard. So, what are those basically dimensions available here or levels date then fiscal week that is current week calendar week fiscal month calendar month fiscal quarter calendar quarter fiscal year and calendar year then next particular characteristic of our uh, dimension as we as we as we said that every dimension contains four characteristic we already done discussing what we mean by levels now we'll discuss about dimension attributes so the dimension attribute are individual pieces of information we are going to store in the dimension that can be found at more than one level each level will have an id that identifies that level a start and an end date for the time period represented at that level a time spam that indicates the number of days in the period and a description of the level. Each level has level attributes associated with it that provides descriptive information about the value in that level. The dimension attribute found at that level and additional attributes specific to the level are included. For example, if we are talking about the month level, we will find attributes that describe the value for the month such as the month of the year it represents or the month in the calendar quarters. This would be numbers indicating which month of the year or which month of quarter it is. Now, few other characteristics which were already discussed level attributes and hierarchies. So, Level attributes. The Oracle Warehouse Builder user guides contains a more complete list of all the attributes that are available. Oracle Warehouse Builder tracks which of these attributes are applicable to which level and allows the setting of a separate description that identifies the attribute for that level. Towards the end of the topic, we, we will uh, look at the data object editor as well. So, we must also define at least one hierarchy for our time dimension. Remember, a hierarchy is a structure in our dimension that is composed of certain levels in order. There can be one or more hierarchies in a dimension. For example, calendar month, calendar quarter and calendar year can be a hierarchy. We could view our data at each of this level and the next level, uh, next level up would simply be a summation of all the lower level data within that period. A calendar quarter sum would be the sum of all the values in the calendar month level in that quarter. Now and the multidimensional implementation includes the metadata to facilitate this kind of calculation. This one of the strength of multidimensional implementation. Now let's start with this. As you can see we have to click on dimension right click click on new we'll get this type of a uh, wizard. It gives us a wizard where we can create a time dimension. As you can see, we have to add a name for the same. So we have added here real time. That is a name for our dimension. We can also add description as well. And then after this, we have to click on next. As you, uh, as you can see, keep the option that is our OLAP only. And here will change the date that is will start with a calendar that is from the year 2003 and 3rd month. As you can see, you, you can add anything else as well. Then in next part, as you can see, we have this particular type of an hierarchy. Now in this particular part, as you can see, uh, one thing which I would like to add here that when we talk about this particular four, uh, step 4, 
here as you can see this step the hierarchy levels of our time dimension where we have four things calendar year calendar month and calendar uh, day that is calendar month quarter and year now in this particular part as you can see the day and the calendar week all this are available but in week hierarchy these two things are not available the levels not available here because uh, uh, because a week does not roll up or aggregate to a month some months have four week while some have five and that's not even exact weeks the only month that has month evenly divided by weeks is february and that's only during non leap years so we can see that we do not sum up nicely into months or even higher levels of time i hope this particular point is clear and hence we are going to use normal hierarchy only then click on next as soon as we click on next we'll find a window window or a summary window as you can see and here we are done with first particular part it shows a progress bar once we are done with the pro progress bar and our necessary objects are basically created or a dimension as you can see it gives information here as well creating dimension sequence and what are the details it is create creating then in next particular part we are going to as now as you can see here we have four things here in first part in first part we have real time map then we have real time sequence that populates surrogate id then we have real time table that supports the relational implementation of time dimension and then we have real time map that is mapping mapping is possible with the help of the fourth one so as you can see click on that and right click and open an editor here as you can see we can actually view it nicely how just click on view and then auto layout as you can see it gives us a very descriptive information about our tables database tables now once we are done with this then you can close it or if you want you can just save it as well as soon as we are done with this then we continue with creating a dimension right click on then click on new it will gives us a wizard then click on next as soon as we click on next is give uh, it gives us a window where we have to enter a name so i have entered real category you can write description as well if you want then here keep the r olap same that is relational online analytical process here it is showing a table so we have id name and description you can also edit this particular table as you can see we have data type where k2 and some buffer size it is 25 you can change it to 30 40 50 whatever you want as well as we can also change a data type for each and every r column which is present i hope this particular point is clear so then click on next as soon as we click on next it provides us a a, a layout or or a table as you can see specify the levels in our default hierarchy so which type of levels we are going to specify here i'll just add two points as you can see first is category or we can say description is accounting category and then same way time type second is so here we have type as you can see i have enter type and we can add any description as well here so you can write anything whatever you want here so once we are done with this then click on next as soon as we click on next it gives us a information a table and a levels which we have provided as you can see both things are present here then click on next as soon as we click on next it gives us this particular type where we have to keep selected do not keep history then click on next it will start creating a dimension as you can see diamond dimension creation in progress so it gives us it is finished successfully and finish click on finish so as you can see we have three information real time category under dimension then under tables we have this particular real category 
one table which is created and in sequence we have this real sequence i hope this particular practical is clear in next lecture we'll continue with the next part thank